Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. If you've seen my videos before, you know I try and give lots and hints and tips and show you how I've made my soap. Now this video is the first in a potential series of videos, if you guys are interested, where rather than me showing you how I make one of my soaps, I'm going to make a soap specifically designed for you to then make it yourself. So how does that work? Firstly, all the soaps in this series will focus on a different core technique. So there won't be anything like, here's our fifth hanger swirl that we're going to try. Also, I want to make sure that we stay away from anything that requires a specialist piece of equipment or something unusual that you have to buy that you won't really continue to use in the future. Everything I use will be either part of what I see as an average soap maker's kit, or if I do use something a little bit more specialised towards the technique, I'll either give you an alternative or I'll show you how to make one yourself. Some videos will be in two parts, like this one. The first part will be very similar to what you're used to seeing, with me making the soap and giving you lots of hints and tips and explaining everything that I'm doing. So if you're kind of just like that format, that's great, you shouldn't notice any different. The second part will be aimed at those of you who do actually want to go and make the soap yourself and it will include all the possible extras that you could need. So what could those extras be? Well, it might be something like the calculations that you need to make the various different elements of a soap. And when we've got something like that, I will typically produce a download that you can then download and use to help you make all of those calculations. Or it might be how to make a piece of equipment. So for example, something like a foam board mold. Let's say we're using a mold that's a particular size or a particular shape, and you don't have one of those and you don't want to go and buy it. Okay? So we'll look at maybe making something quite cheaply or with stuff that you already have. Now, there are of course some caveats. There is a presumption with all of my soaps that if you're going to try and attempt to make a soap yourself, that you are already competent in making cold process soap, that you're confident at working with lye, and you are fully familiar with all of the lye safety procedures. And also, even though I'll try my hardest to give you as much help as I can in all of these videos, I make no guarantees that your soap will turn out absolutely perfect. All of the quantities, techniques, etc. that I use will be things that work reliably for me. But we know soap can be a tricky thing and things won't always go perfectly. Also, some techniques will be harder than others. I don't want to make this series just concentrating on really basic techniques, although there will be some of those. So, be realistic about your skills level. Try and push yourself a little bit, but don't pick a technique that you know is way beyond your ability. Now, I know I've been going on for a little bit about this, but I just really wanted to introduce the concept of this possible series and gauge people's interest. These videos do take a long time for me to produce, so for the videos and the extras and all of that sort of stuff does on average take me two days to make. Now if people aren't interested, then hey, that's fine, I'd rather know and then I won't sink all that time into it. But if you are interested, then do please let me know and I'll try and make more of these and put them up wherever I can and then hopefully we can get a little mini series going. Come on, let's go make some soap. So the first thing we're going to do is make our scrapers. So I've drawn out the design that I want and then I've put this down into various stages and we're going to cut out our scrapers so that we have one available for each layer. Now when you're doing your scrapers just using some cardboard like I'm doing here is absolutely fine. You don't need anything fancy. 
Now, admittedly, if you do use some cardboard, these are probably a one use item and you'd have to cut them out again if you wanted to reuse them or, or make another soap. If you used some sort of plastic, then they're going to last a little bit longer. But plastic's going to be a bit more tricky to cut out. Now, if you're actually looking to make this soap from this video, you'll need to pop into the sort of attached video, the secondary video that I've got, where I'm going to have a lot more of the picky details about how to go about making this. And in there, you will find instructions on how to take this template that I've got and make it fit your mold so that you haven't got to recreate it. So as you can see, all I'm doing is roughly counting out the picture and then I'm going to loosely attach it to some cardboard. Now, the only reason I want to attach it to the cardboard is just so I can get the right shape when I cut it out. As I go and use it in the soap, I'm actually going to remove the diagram. So I've now just completed all the cutting out. I'm sure you didn't want to watch all that. Let's have a look at these layers. So we'll have poured the sky. So the first layer scrapes out the entire picture and all the mountings. The next layer is going to go in and scrape out and just leave a little bit to pour those snow caps in. And then the next layer will then scrape out and leave us to pour the grey of the mountain. And then the next one, that dark bit of green grass. Then we'll pour the light bit of green grass. And then we'll pour that bit of foreground. And as our last step, we'll fill in the pathway. OK, so we've got all of our scrapers done. So let's just check that our moulds are all nicely prepared. And we're just going to do a little test just to make sure that we've not mucked up and done our scrapers the wrong size or anything. So I'm just going to literally grab them and just run them through and make sure that they work properly. And then I'm just going to take a little piece of sticky tape and write on that in some permanent pen front. Um, because it's really easy. Every time you move your mould and spin it around and all that sort of stuff, it's quite easy that you can get a little bit muddled up. And what you don't want to do is scrape one thing sort of front to back and then another layer back to front and completely muck up your design. And I find it useful to stick a second piece of tape over the front bit so then you're not writing directly on your mould. And also as well, if you touch your mould or anything like that, that writing isn't going to come off. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you know we're not just going to randomly guess how much soap we need. So I've calculated the amount of oils and lye I'm going to need because we're going to make each one of these layers up individually. Now, again, I'm not going to go into these maths in a great amount of detail here. That's what I'm going to put into the other video for those of you who actually want to go through and make this soap. I've also made a spreadsheet which will actually do all of these calculations for you. So you'll just pop in the size of your mould and it will work everything out. So the next thing for us to do is to choose our colours. Now, when I go through and choose mine, I'm sure you've seen before, I've got my little colour swatches all made up. Now here, I'm not necessarily trying to match it to the exact colours of the picture. I'm trying to sort of match it, but choose something that's actually quite a pleasing scheme. So as you can see, I'm just going to take my little colour swatches and just keep muddling around until I've actually come up with a combination that I like. And then I'll mix those micas up in some oil to get ready to make the soap. So from the choices I've made on my colour swatches, I'm going to use Lime from You Make It Up. Emerald Lagoon, also from You Make It Up. Black Gold from Mica Mama. Antique Silver from Mica Mama. And then for my sky, because it's marked with a letter rather than a number, I know that that's a blend of colours. So I've got my blend W here, so I can just check onto my list and see how I made that up. And I can see I used one part electric blue and one part titanium dioxide to get that colour.
And then I find it's always useful to take a picture of what you're trying to achieve and stick it on the wall in front of you. Now for this soap, we're going to be making it upside down. So make sure you stick it up the correct way, which is upside down in this case. Okay then, so let's get everything together that we need. So I've made up my entire amount of lye and oils. We're not going to try and make up individual tiny weeny little batches by pouring little diddly bits of lye into little diddly bits of water. We're making it all up in one go, letting it cool and then we'll use it as we need it. And then with the stick blenders, I do find it useful to use both your normal stick blender for your bigger bits of batter. And then I also use my mini stick blender. Now, a lot of people use those battery ones. I really find those quite rubbish. So I've got this plug-in one. People always ask me where I've got it from, so I will leave a link in the description. And this one is just so much better because it's got a nice lot of power and it won't give up on you every five seconds when you try and use it. Okay, so let's make our first layer. Now, remember, we're actually building this upside down. So we'll be starting with the sky on the bottom of our mould. So we're going to check our calculations and measure out enough oils and lye to make up this batch. Now here, remember, you're making up very small batches. So it's really, really important that you're accurate with your measurements. I would really suggest measuring in grams when you're doing such small quantities because if you go over by a fraction of a gram it's not really a problem. You start going over by parts of ounces then that's a bigger deal. Now I know a lot of people like to soap at room temperature and if that's you that's fine. For me it doesn't really work because it gives me a false trace. So I am going to warm my lye solution up a little bit and I'm just going to go over that process because I often see people asking about it. So how I do it is I've got two jugs that fit nicely inside of each other because they're the same jug and conveniently one's got a red bottom and one's got a blue bottom. So I always pour my lye into the one with the red bottom and then I put some hot water in the one with the blue bottom. It's a system that makes sense to me, dangerous lye in the red jug and water in the blue jug and then at least I know they're colour coordinated so I end up putting the right thing in my soap and pouring the right thing down the drain. And then I'm just going to, as normal, make my soap. So I'm going to add my lye to my oils and blend. I'm not too worried about if I hit emulsion or a light trace here because I don't need to keep a super, super fluid batter. So I'm just going to blend until I've got a trace. Now here, my little beaker was too full, so I'm just pouring it back into that bigger jug so I can actually blend it. Add in the micas that I've pre-mixed for the sky. And then add in the fragrance oil that I've calculated for this layer. Now the fragrance oil I'm using is cashmere satin, which may seem a little bit of an odd choice for a landscape soap, but this is not a soap I'm going to be selling. It's just going to be for personal use and for friends, that type of thing. So I've chosen this because firstly it's one of my favourite fragrances and secondly because it does accelerate trace, not really badly but enough so I don't have to wait all day for each layer to set up. So then when I've got everything mixed in and I'm happy with everything I just need to pour it into the bottom of my mould. Now when I calculate the batter for this type of soap, it's inevitable you're going to have some spare batter, some's going to be scraped out, but I want that to be a smaller amount as possible. So therefore I will always check with one of my little cutouts to make sure I've got the batter that's going to come to the appropriate place. And it might mean I want to perhaps prop a side of the mould up or something just to make sure that it's all going to be filling in the right areas. So when the batter has set up to the right consistency, that's when we want to start scraping. 
Now, the consistency that you're looking for is so that it's just able to stand up on its own without flopping over. You don't want it too thick because then you won't get a nice smooth scraped layer. So I'm just going to take the picture off of my little scraper. You may find it useful to write front or back on your scraper so you make sure you use it round the right way. You will be scraping excess batter out of this mould so make sure you've got a little spare mould to pop the batter into. So we want to pop our scraper right in at the back of the mould. Now if you've cut out your little scrapers correctly you should have two little tabs on them and these are to keep your scrapings level each time you do a pass. Now when you first pop it in you don't need to jam it down as far as it will go. Just start scraping gradually, gradually remove the batter, take little bits out until you get to that final level. And then when you finish your scraping, it's really important to make sure you remember to clean down all the sides of your mould. That way you're going to have lovely clean lines on the outside of your bars, rather than being all muddied and dirtied from batter that's got slapped all over the mould. So that's our first layer done. So now our second little layer is going to be those tiny weeny little snow caps. So once again, same process. I'm just mixing up a very small amount of batter that I've got from working out in my spreadsheet. My fragrance oil does actually discolour slightly. So as I want my snow nice and white, and it's only a very small amount, I'm not putting any fragrance in this layer. Now, because these snow caps are a little bit picky, I am actually going to be very careful with how I pour them in to make sure that I do drop them into the tops of the points of the mountain. If you just dump everything all in in one go, it's quite likely you might just have all your snow in one area and not in the peaks of all of the mountains. So just be careful where you pop it in. And then just the last little check with my picture to make sure I've popped it all in the right places. So once our white batter has set up, we then need to take our second little scraper, the one with just the snow caps missing off of the mountain, remove the picture and then we can scrape again. And then don't forget to just clean up those sides again before you move on. And we're just going to then repeat it for all of the layers. Now I'm sure you don't want me to go through and labour every single layer. So I'm just going to literally sort of pop the layers together and pop some music on and then get to the end of the pour.
So that is all of our layers done. So we're just going to finish this off as normal by covering it up and then popping it in the oven to see pop overnight. So in at 170 degrees F, 75 degrees C. Turn the oven off as soon as you put the soap in there and just leave it to sit overnight. A look at the cut then the next day. Now hopefully if you were scraping down the sides of your mould nicely each time you did a layer, you'll end up with nice clear sides with no smudgy old marks on them. And then we can see if we've managed to get our picture. Woohoo, look at that, there we go. I really do hope that you give this soap a go. And if you do, I really hope that you get a brilliant picture as well. Now all of the bars are going to be fairly similar, so we'll just have a quick look at those. And then while we're finishing off the cut, I'll just remind you about the second part of this video. If you do want to make this soap, I've made an additional part of the video, the link's in the description below, where I take you through all of the calculations, how to use the spreadsheet that I've made, and how to take the template that I've designed and make sure that it fits your mould. So if you do want a little bit more help with this and you want to get all the measurements and everything calculated for you, then just click on the second part of the video from the description and then you can get all that extra help. And then just right at the end there, comparing what we actually got with our plan. I think we had a pretty close shot there, didn't we? I then always leave my cut soaps to sit for a day before I bevel the edges. Now, a few people have requested for me to go over my beveling, so I'm just going to do this here. Now, I've actually got a planer that I use, and I'll leave a link to the description box below. So I always go round and bevel the short sides first and then I go through and bevel the long sides. So I try and do a nice consistent pattern rather than shopping from a short side to a long side because then you get a nice consistent bevel. Now, if you haven't got a beveler or a planer, then a good old vegetable peeler works just as well. So again, same process, just literally going around your corners first and then going through the long sides and you'll get exactly the same sort of effects. There's no need to go out and buy some sort of expensive beveler or anything. Try it with a potato peeler first of all. Now both of those methods will leave some little beveling scraps from your soap which you can just use in a confetti soap or scrunch them up to make a little ball. If you don't want any wastage at all, another thing you can do is when your soap is still a little bit softer, so pretty well just soon after you've cut it, if you run along the edge of it with a knife just nice and gently or even with your fingers, you can actually smooth that sharp edge of the soap off and that way it gets rid of that sharp edge and you don't waste any soap. So have a play, see which method you like and then pick one and stick with that going forward. So here's the final picture of the soap. I really do hope that you have a go at making this soap. If you just want to have the downloads for the spreadsheet to calculate the amounts for each section or for the scrapers, I've put the links to those in the description. If you'd like to have a little bit more help with how you actually tailor all of these things, like the amounts for your soap and to make the scrapers fit your specific mould, then head over to part two and I'll go through all of that in that part of the tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, then maybe you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or queries, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!